Hello, and welcome to part two of my video lesson for Meeting of the Spirits by John McLaughlin. In the uh, previous video, we went over the intro, and in this one, we'll be continuing with the remainder of the opening section, and then we'll go into the melody and then the uh, interlude. Um, now, the rest of the opening segment sequence is between two chords. The first chord is more or less an F sharp dominant 7 flat 9 chord. Basically, I like this. Um, which uh, we form by placing the first finger on the low E string on the second fret, fourth finger goes on the D string on the fourth fret, and the second finger goes on the B string on the second fret. The uh, second chord is G major 7 sharp 11, which is like this. And uh, for that one, we put the middle finger on the low E string on the third fret, the third finger goes on the D string on the fourth fret, and uh, the fourth finger goes on the G string on the fourth fret, and then finally the first finger goes on the B string on the second fret. Now, if you um, find these chords a little bit difficult, or if you're unfamiliar with them, um, just you know, pause the video, rewind the video, look at what I'm doing, and uh, just practice going between the two chords until you feel comfortable with them. Uh, now we'll take a look at the right hand picking pattern. Uh, the time signature here is in 6-4, so keep that in mind when you're practicing. If you are playing along with a metronome, which I highly recommend that you do, um, count out a couple bars of six beats in order to cast, just kind of wrap your mind around it. Uh, I'll play the pattern for you now, just um, slowly, so you can see what my right hand is doing. screwed up that last one, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so the picking pattern is uh, down, oops, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And it just repeats that. So uh, that can be a little bit tricky at first, because you're skipping a lot of strings. And um, what I'd recommend doing is, again, keep your wrist locked on the bridge of your guitar. It'll give you a lot more stability and um, just make you a lot more accurate. Um, there are also a couple different variations you can use of, of this picking pattern. Um, one of which I've seen people use is using kind of like a combination of the pick and the fingers. But um, I like the way that I'm doing it here, and I just kind of find it more f efficient overall. So now I'm going to play uh, this sequence three times at different speeds. One's going to be at uh, half speed, which is at 88 BPM. Next will be at three-quarter speed, which is at 132 BPM. And then finally one at full speed, which is going to be at 176 BPM. Um, feel free to play along with me, but uh, don't play at the faster speeds until you can play it cleanly at the slower speeds.
Well, I'm glad that I just finished that last part. Um, well, I did because uh, about 30 motorcycles just decided to drive by. Um, so anyway, that's the uh, that's the whole um, arpeggiated chord pattern. And then next we have the melody, which is the easiest part of the song. Um, just watch me play it, and um, you should be able to pick it out with any, uh, without any problems. Uh, we're starting starting up here on the 14th fret. <laughs> So uh, there we have it. Really simple, no problems uh, there. Um, and then after the melody comes John Glaufman's solo, and uh, I won't go over that note for note, but I will say that using the uh, F-sharp Phrygian or F-sharp minor pentatonic scales are good places to start off. Uh, personally, I'm not that much of a scale person. I generally try to play by ear and intuition instead of focusing on, um, on theory. And, uh, you know, I kind of maybe recommend that with a piece like this. Um, you know, try focusing more on the sound that you're getting and the dynamics, because it's a really powerful piece. And uh, you can really fly off the wall with the solo, and um, this is a good avenue to do that with. Um, but just let the harmonies and the dynamics guide your improvisation. So uh, after McLaughlin's solo, we have um, uh, the melody that gets restated again. And then there's this uh, fast unison line that brings us to the interlude. Um, this line begins three beats after the last melody statement. And um, I'll play it for you slow a couple times so you can see what my fingers are doing. And, um, you know, I'll just count off uh, six beats here and then uh, we'll, we'll get started with it. And I'll, I'll just include the last part of the melody too. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, we'll just do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six. unison line that's uh, kind of an, uh, an ascending um, really fast and uh, that will bring us into the um, into the interlude section but I'm gonna play this whole uh, ascending unison line really uh, really fast here um, with the metronome but first I'm gonna just play it at uh, kind of a slow medium and then go to the fast speed at that point So that was the uh, the whole ascending unison line thing, um, and then after that comes the interlude. I don't think we're gonna have enough time to do the uh, interlude in this video. Um, I only have a few minutes left here, so uh, we're just gonna save that for the next one. Uh, but I will say that with that that one ascending line, there's a, a few different ways that you can um, uh, finger it with your left hand. But uh, I again like the way that I'm doing it here and. Uh, it's for a very specific reason, because during Jan Hammer's solo, there's a uh, there's a, um, a background line that's kind of a variation of the of the ascending line that we were just playing here, um, 
and uh, the position that I'm using kind of makes it easier to, to jump from this area up to here as opposed to uh, you know going from up here all the way down here and then doing the whole ascending line thing. But um, you know, use whatever works for you, and if you find one that uh, that works out a little better for you, um, you know, go ahead and use it. There aren't any right or wrong answers. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at the uh, interlude, and then the uh, the whole uh, uh, um, kind of background line that's used during Jan Hammer solo, and then that's pretty much it. Um, so until then, see you next time.